Hey guys, Floris here. You're watching a very skilled player playing Super Mario Brothers. This player, however, is not a human, but an artificial intelligence. It started without any knowledge of the game. In fact, it didn't even know that pressing the right button would make Mario walk to the end of the level. It learned all this through an algorithm called Deep Q Learning. In this video, I'll show you how this AI learned to play Mario, how its brain works, and how it's all based on reinforcement learning. The algorithm we're going to use is part of an area of artificial intelligence called reinforcement learning. Here, the two main elements are the agent and the environment. In our case, the environment is the game, and the agent is a neural network. In each interaction, the agent observes the environment and takes an action. If Mario walks to the right or gets a score in the game, the agent receives a positive reward. If Mario stands still or dies, the agent is penalized and receives a negative reinforcement. The agent is made up of a deep convolutional neural network. It receives as input a short sequence of images from the game screen. These images are reduced in size and rendered in black and white. Based on the image processing, the network predicts a value for each of the possible actions. Each value is an estimate of the maximum possible reward that the agent can obtain if it takes that action. To control Mario in the best way, we simply choose the action that will provide the maximum reward according to its estimates. Here, for example, we predicted that the action that would bring the greatest reward in the long run is to walk to the right and jump. It makes sense, because then he jumps over the enemies and survives. Here on the right, we have the values that the network is giving for each action at the top and the agent's view at the bottom. The parts in red are those that the network considers most relevant when making its predictions. We can think of them as marking where the agent's focus is concentrated at that moment. Now let's look at an agent being trained from the beginning, starting at level 1 of the game. At first, you can see that the agent has no idea where it is or what's going on. The neural network makes totally wrong predictions. Remember how I said that the agent always chooses the action that promises the greatest reward? Well, it's not exactly like that. Sometimes it ignores all predictions and simply chooses a random action. It does this so that it can explore the environment and gather new experiences. The idea is that, through trial and error, the agent adjusts its parameters so that the neural network makes better predictions, thus guaranteeing more rewards. Just like us humans, the agent in the DeepQ learning algorithm can also learn from its past experiences. It stores each of its interactions with the environment in a memory bank, which it can later revisit to learn how to deal with similar situations in the future. In practice, the amount of experiences the agent can store is limited by the computer's memory capacity. This means that, like humans, it can also forget things. Each session of interaction between the agent and the environment is called an episode. In our case, each of Mario's lives has an episode. Below, in the left-hand corner, you can see the progression of the episodes. These are just approximations I've made so that we can see the agent's progress more clearly. In practice, the learning graph is like this one, full of oscillations. One of the reasons for this is that, as we've seen, the agent is constantly switching between maximizing rewards and exploring the environment. It wasn't too difficult for our algorithm to complete level 1. It took about a thousand episodes, a little over an hour of training. Let's get it learning to pass level 2. Remember how I said that agents can forget things? My computer's memory can only store so many experiences, so our agent is like other evil-looking Nemo. He suffers from recent memory loss. That's why I made a modification to the game. In the original Super Mario, when the player dies three times, they have to start all over again. In our simulation, the player only has one life, but every time they pass a level, their progress is saved. So when our agent dies, he can start again at the same level he died at. By doing this, we alleviate the problem of the agent's reduced memory capacity. What's more, we've considerably reduced the time it takes him to learn how to pass a level.
Level 2 took a little longer, but it wasn't too difficult for our agent to master either. Now let's see how our algorithm does on level 3. This level was particularly difficult. Its structure is quite different from the others, and I don't think our agent was able to use much of what it had learned so far. One of the algorithm's parameters is the discount factor. Remember that the neural network is trying to predict which action will guarantee the maximum possible reward in the long term. Well, it turns out that this long term is discounted. A higher discount rate makes future rewards more discounted. In other words, it makes the agent give priority to the rewards he can earn in the short term. It's like that saying that it's better to have a bird in the hand than two in the bush, you know? For the agent, the world could end at any moment and he could die. So he prioritizes accumulating rewards in the short term. The problem is that here in this part of the level he's taken it to the extreme. Since every time he tried to go over the top he quickly died, he decided to stop trying that route and started simply jumping off the cliff without stopping, because that way he would be able to go further and earn more rewards. He wasn't thinking about the long term. What I did then was to lower the discount rate, so that the agent would value more the rewards that he would only receive a little later. I also increased the agent's exploration rate, to make him try new things more often. With these adjustments, the agent progressed much more quickly and managed to get past the part where he was stuck. Here at the end of the level, our agent was having trouble jumping on top of the structure, but when he saw that the turtle was going to catch him, he decided he'd better get out of there. Finally, after a lot of effort and adjustments, our agent made it past level 3. Now it's time for him to try and master level 4, the last level of this world. Super Mario Bros. is made up of 8 worlds, each with 4 levels. In total, there are 32 levels. Mario's objective is to rescue Princess Peach, who has been kidnapped by Bowser, Mario's arch-enemy. Bowser is the king of the culprits, the little enemy turtles you see throughout the game. Although each of the worlds has a different theme, the last level of each one always takes place in a castle and ends with a fight against Bowser. So, will our agent be able to get past the king turtle? To my surprise, this level didn't prove too challenging for our agent, who was able to learn quickly as he went. Our neural network was not intimidated by Bowser. With the first world completed and the princess still not found, it was time for our agent to move on to world 2. The first level of this world has the same theme as level 1 of the previous world, only with more monsters and obstacles. You may have noticed that our agent only moves to the right, and that's just it. I've limited the actions he can take to 5 moves. Do nothing, walk to the right, walk to the right and jump, run to the right and run to the right and jump. This means that our agent can't walk backwards or enter the vertical pipes. On the other hand, this limitation on movement, by making the search space smaller, meant that our agent learned much faster how to complete the levels. In 
the end, this level wasn't much of a challenge for our algorithm either. After around 700 episodes, the agent had already managed to reach the flag. The most annoying part was the stepping stone at the end. It took the agent a while to learn that he needed to jump on it. But overall, it was a smooth level. I think he managed to use some of what he learned in the previous levels, especially in level 1 of the last world. Now let's see how the algorithm does in level 2. Level 2 of the second world is quite different from the ones we've seen so far. It takes place underwater, so it's something completely new for our agent. Let's see if he can handle it. It took a while but our algorithm coped. The next level is kind of a continuation of the previous one. The player has to walk along platforms while killer fish jump around. It seemed like a very difficult level. After a lot of dying, our agent finished this level. Now it's on to level 4, the last in this world. In this level, which takes place in a castle, we meet Bowser again. Actually, it's a fake Bowser. There are 7 in total. The real Bowser only appears in the last level. Bowser, once again, was no match for our agent, who managed to finish the level without too much difficulty. We've now seen two of the eight worlds completed. I'm now going to show all the levels we've been through being completed in one go. I'll throw in a bonus at the end, showing the trained agent completing the third world.
As of the date of this video, I've already managed to train Ayava using deep queer learning to pass 20 of the game's 32 levels. I believe that with another week or two of training, Ayava will be able to complete the game. As I said before, our agent's ability to store experiences is limited by my computer's memory. But that's the least of it. Estimates suggest that the human brain has more than 125 trillion connections between neurons, called synapses. In comparison, the neural network that governs our agent has only a few million connections or parameters. It's an absurdly big difference. Looking at it, it's impressive how our neural network has managed to learn how to play the game so well. Well, as the video has already gotten too long, I'll stop here. When Ayava has beaten all the levels, make a new video showing the results. If you like this video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'd be very happy to hear what you thought of the video and what your ideas are for future videos, so leave a comment. Thanks.